So today we're looking at the rear bracket of the sunroof, or the, the part that holds the rear of the vinyl, and uh, obviously this is completely gone. Uh, we've got some steel, and to be honest I don't think it needs to be that accurate, so we're just going to um, pretty much cut it straight, and then um, just curve over the edge, and then obviously we have to curve it to the shape of the roof, which might take a little bit more thinking about. And just positioning it on top of the front part, whereupon the strings go back and to this, I assume that, uh, that all that part there is actually missing and it should be the same size as this. So we'll make it that size. So unfortunately we didn't have one piece of metal that was the full length, so we've made it out of two. Um, and now we're going to shape each half and then at some point weld it together. Uh, we've already taken the corners off as you can see. So to make this uh, curve that we've got on this piece here, on the new flat piece we've made, we've got a bit of oak here, we're going to actually shape it into the same profile so that when we put it on here and hammer it, we should get nearer the profile and we're going to try and work our way around. We know at the corner it's going to be difficult because there'll be more metal than we actually need and we may have to splice the corner, but let's see how we get on. So line up the edge of the metal with the edge of the wood and just work your way along until you start seeing the curve appearing. So once you've finished with the wood and you've got it to this stage where you've got this curve in here you will find that there is this slight uh, line that's not straight that should be straight and this is where all the stresses are where upon you've made some metal go a little less further than it should have done and that either needs to be, you've got two choices, you can either cut this and allow the stresses to come out and re-weld it back together again, but lucky enough I've got a shrinker, so I'm going to shrink this piece here that's curved and then eventually it will become straight. And after being on the shrinking machine, just on that final edge there, that's it now looking absolutely straight. So although it's a bit difficult to see, there's actually a U-shaped bracket that goes on here whereupon the cable goes through. So we need to re-manufacture that, and although it's all missing from here, I think it's a full circle. So what we've done is we've made this section here, uh, which we need to cut in half. It's not quite the same curvature as the other one, it's slightly sharper, but um, hopefully it'll be okay. We've got um, the wired test to go through there to make sure it's okay. And how we made that is like this. So you need three sockets and each one fits inside the other one. So this one fits inside this one, this one fits inside here and also inside here. However, when you put them together like so and then clamp it in a vise, obviously that's a flat sheet to start with, clamp it in a vise, and as you do it up, that impression is left. And all we need to do now is cut that in half, uh, trim around the edges, and hopefully that will be all we need. And so that's them cut in half, and we've cut the centre out as it is on the other one as well, and they get positioned roughly about where it is now, something like that, slightly on a, an angle. And I've also done the other side as well. I've also checked that the cable that we've got, this cable, actually runs underneath without getting trapped, so it's deep enough. So those brackets are now both welded on and we've got a bit of cleaning up to do just to make it look a bit tidier. And now all we've got to do is cut it to the right length and join the two parts together. And so that's now the final piece welded in the middle. We've got a slight more of a curve than the other part has got, but um, actually I think ours is slightly more correct than the bit that came off, because I think the other bit's probably been slightly bent. So we've just got to put the holes now, the elong elongated holes, and we've also got to find a way of uh, countersinking them uh, across the length of the hole, how, how they are in this one, so that when you screw it to, this, to the roof of the car, you can't actually see the screws through the vinyl. But uh, that's it for today. And this is how it looks on the car. And as I said, the, the curve is slightly more, but actually, 
when it's clamped down. It's not bad, it's pretty good. Maybe a bit more fabrication just to make sure it's a bit better than this. But when the vinyl's on, obviously the vinyl will take up a few millimetres of tolerance of anything that's not right. So we've marked up the hole positions and now we're going to punch them with the Whitney punch and then make sure they're clean and then we're going to sink them down. So we're going to cut slightly smaller holes than what's required so that when we push the when we countersink the material it will actually open up the holes. So that's those holes now nibbled out and we're just going to file over the um, unevenness of those and then we're going to look at countersinking them. So I'm not sure if you can see but that is one of the indentations or the countersunk parts done and how we did it is we got two uh, brackets, identical, uh, clamped them together on the metal and then we got a end of a drill, we turned it into uh, almost like a pill shape, dropped it in there, actually it could have been a bit slightly longer uh, and then we literally squash it in the vise uh, and this actually squashes down and pushes it out through the back. So that's been rubbed down now and covered in primer, acid S primer. So that's ready now for the vinyl and to go on the car.